So, what are you trying to say? That we're trapped here forever. Hey, do you respond to DMs? If so, I'd like to inform you about another type of lost media by someone who saw it as a kid and can never find it again. My friend from Brazil saw a Blood Girl cartoon in the mid to late 2000s. I made a forum post about it months ago, but I want more people to be aware. Around a month ago, I received some messages on Instagram discussing what appears to be an obscure, unidentified cartoon involving a blood girl. A forum post was made onto the Lost Media Wiki forums November 8th of last year, by the same person who had messaged me. It really seems like they are dedicated with helping their friend find this animation. However, despite their efforts, nothing yet has come up. This is what the forum post reads. I have a friend from Brazil that goes by the name Koli Calamari on the internet that remembers seeing a creepy animated short of a girl that anywhere she went would turn water into blood. They said they saw the short at around 2009 to 2010 on either MTV or a Brazil TV channel. It was either a silent short or a music video. They don't remember any character speaking in the short, but they do remember the short having some audio, but was possibly drowned out by bad transmission. It starred a girl with short black hair and a dress, possibly red. The whole thing had a distinct black, white, red, and possibly blue palette to it. The style was very simple and a bit rough. They don't remember there being a title card as either there was none or they started watching midway through. All they remember from it is the girl was possibly a child going to school, but every time she arrived near any body of water, it turned to blood. They think that maybe her teacher was involved in some way, but they do not remember how she looked like at all. There were two scenes that stuck with Collie. One where she went to grab some water from an indoor water dispenser, those with the big bottles on top and as she was about to get water on her cup, she sees all the water turn into blood while she looks horrified. And the other one was at the very end, where she was inside a bus going back home. She looked at the viewer looking scared slash sad, possibly covered in blood. They assumed that she was going back home. The camera panned out. They remember the camera panning to the left side of the screen, to show a thing that was a final twist of the whole thing, but does not remember what it was. Closest recreation of the blood girl from description. Key moments of the cartoon sketched from memory. According to a commenter in the forum post, this strange cartoon has been a mystery for years now. On November 18th, 2022, a user who goes by Leon made a comment, stating, I recently saw your friend's post on Reddit about this cartoon, but it was like two years ago, and it really saddens me that so far they haven't been able to find it. Yep. Holly has been in search for this animation for over three years now. They made a post about it a long time ago on the r slash tip of my tongue subreddit, but it appears no one was able to help find it. Hopefully this video can put some more awareness onto it, and finally put this mystery to rest. Suggestions to what this cartoon could possibly be have been raised, however most of these suggestions have been ruled out. 
Cartoons which have been confirmed not to be the Lost Blood Girl animation include Ruby Gloom. Ruby Gloom was a Canadian animated TV series, which aired from 2006 to 2008, having 40 episodes created. It's a pretty well-known show I'm sure a lot of you watching this are familiar with. However, this show has been ruled out. Although the art style fitting the description of what Collie saw, there seems to be no familiar scene within this series of a girl turning water into blood. Another cartoon which has been ruled out is Growing Up Creepy, a TV series which also aired from 2006 to 2008 for 26 episodes. However, likewise, contains not a single scene with a girl that turns water into blood. It was stated that their friend most likely saw this mystery cartoon on either MTV or a Brazil TV channel. An animated series was suggested that actually aired on MTV Brazil. This series goes by Fundencio e Sus Amigos, and I definitely butchered that horribly. Also known as Fudencio and his friends. It premiered August 23rd, 2005, and ended August 25th, 2011. This series follows the daily life and adventures of a group of students who are friends with a punk and mean boy named Fudencio. This show is more of a darker cartoon, being recommended for ages 16 and up. So it would make sense for a scary, obscure, blood girl scene like this to take place. The show had 178 episodes, and it appears some of these episodes have become lost media. OP and their friend has stated that if Wundencio does contain Blood Girl, it could potentially be from a lost episode. Another Brazilian MTV cartoon was suggested, known as this, a title which I will butcher if I try to pronounce. Every episode of this show was checked, and nothing was found. This obscure cartoon is a mystery. I hope by including this in the video we can acquire some more leads, ideas, and hopefully, answers. This mystery, like I stated before, was suggested to me through Instagram. I might as well let you guys know that if you do have any lost media cases you would like to see me cover in any future videos, send me a message through Instagram or comment down below. I obviously can't guarantee that your suggestion will be covered in a future video like this, but comment away anyways. I like reading all of your ideas, and I seriously appreciate every single suggestion you guys give to me. If you have ever used a VHS before, there is a good chance you have seen a screen like this pop up, a warning screen. These screens were warnings from the FBI, warning viewers not to copy any copyrighted content and the consequences that can occur if you happen to do so. Most of these warning screens were pretty average and normal, some appeared to be terrifying. And now, it appears that one of these warning screens has now fallen into mystery. On February 28th, 2011, a user on YouTube who goes by due to that logo, uploaded a video titled Funny FBI Warning from VHS. The video showcased exactly what the title says, a funny and very bizarre warning. It reads, federal law provides severe blah 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 five years in prison, severe embarrassment, and potential bad luck. So please do not copy this video. According to the video's description, this was found on some children's VHS tape, and is stated in the actual warning to be an educational video. This is one of those unusual cases of lost media where the media itself isn't lost, but any information about it is unknown. What company was behind this warning? 
who created it, and what educational children's tape was this found on? All of these questions are mysteries. No one knows the origin of this peculiar warning sign. Now, is there a chance this could be a fake video? Like this comment says, people can easily run a video through a VCR, and that's true. For all of my videos I do nowadays, I run lots of different footage through a VCR to give it that VHS look. And it really does look authentic and genuine. Is this Minecon 1993? No, this is Minecon 2013, which has simply gone through a VCR. Although this warning screen is something which can pretty easily be faked, I believe it's real as the user who uploaded the video, dude that logo, is a trustworthy user. They've uploaded hundreds of different VHS intros, logos, and warnings over the many years. They've uploaded 389 videos of VHS material. They are a respected member within this community and not one that would troll fellow peers. If this is real, which I feel very sure that it is, how do we actually find the origin of this thing? Dude That Logo has uploaded all kinds of VHS logos and warning screens which are from the United States. I guess the best bet of finding its origin would be simply searching throughout different thrift stores and markets in the US. Just buying preferably obscure educational children's VHS tapes in hopes one of them contain this warning screen. I say preferably obscure as, I mean, if this did come from some popular and known tape, I think it would be documented a lot more on the internet. It's just so bizarre and unusual. If it was from a well-known mainstream tape, surely there would be more reposts of this warning screen and actual information about it, rather than this one post of it online from 12 years ago. Who knows, perhaps one of you watching this could simply know what tape this comes from and actually own it. Solving this pretty much decade long mystery. There's something so fun about these really simple and basic mysteries. The origin of celebrity number 6, the origin of Jeff the Killer. Mysteries which revolve around one question, where did this come from? Just the idea that not a single person knows where this came from is so interesting to me. And yeah, hopefully I'm able to help put more eyes onto this mystery. On February 18th, 2022, a post was made in the unidentified media section on the Lost Media Wiki forums by a user who goes by Ulysses Case, discussing a 90s cartoon which had traumatized them. Okay, now that I think about it, there's something I've been curious about for a while. So, I remember when I was very small, which would have been somewhere between 94 and 96. My mum took me to the Lord and Taylor near us and just like every other department store at that time, there were TVs showing either VHS tapes or TV broadcasts to keep the kids occupied while the parents were shopping. I recall there was an unfamiliar 2D cartoon with gnarly visuals playing, where somebody was dressed like Napoleon Bonaparte and they were all yelling while being chased at night through a dark, barren forest by something scary, and one character fell into orange muck and was covered in it and couldn't get out. I don't recall what exactly it was, but something about this cartoon was so distressing. I wouldn't set foot inside another Lord and Taylor for about five years. As an adult, I can't help but feel curious as to what traumatized me so much about this cartoon however fleeting that trauma ultimately was. I can't find any trace of it on the internet. So I figured that like with all the other nonsense in the back of my geriatric brain, I'd ask here. 
Wow, what was this cartoon? How was this cartoon so traumatizing to the point where this user wasn't able to step inside another Lord and Taylor for five years? Obviously, this person wants to know what cartoon this was. If a cartoon affected me this much as a kid, I would be dying to know what cartoon did this to me. This person deserves to know and hopefully you guys can help solve their mystery. This post gained a lot of views and traction. Many different suggestions had been raised by different users. A user who goes by Chairman Nom had made a comment to their post. Probably off with the date but Samurai Jack? The original poster had replied. Not even close. Samurai Jack premiered well after the age I was willing to go to Lord and Taylor again. I very distinctly remember the premiere, and how I felt when I watched it air for the first time was the polar opposite of how this cartoon made me feel. Also, this cartoon's cheap art style and loud busy tone was a lot rougher quality than Samurai Jack's clean angular lines and stylized thematic cinematography. Other suggestions were given within this thread, however, OP has not confirmed or denied these ideas. Could it have possibly been the Bill and Ted cartoon? Although the specific scene does not ring any bell, Mighty Max sprang to mind. It was on in that era and was dark, for a kids show. When did it look like it was made? Did it look older than the 90s? It seems like something Hanna-Barbera would make. Hopefully by bringing some attention to this case, we can solve the mystery of what cartoon this actually is. And most importantly, the scene that went on to traumatize this user. I'm very curious to see what exactly made OP not want to step foot inside another Lord and Taylor for another five years. Hopefully we find out.